Well, with us right now is Lynn Redwater. She is a registered nurse with Saddleback Memorial. And coming up in uh, just a, a few days, uh, well, yeah, not too many days from now, they're gonna be having a stroke, or actually I should say, a heart health and stroke wellness fair. Good to see you. Hi. Here. Nice to have you here Great. today. Nice to be here. So um, you are the executive director, and I'm gonna read this out, of Cardiovascular Neuro Interventional and Pulmonary Services. That's a big title. That is a big title. But when you see uh, pulmonary, cardiovascular, all that, all kind of go together, which, and obviously with the stroke and heart health fair that's coming up, how important that is, and it's something that you deal with probably on a daily basis, right? Yes, yes. So tell us about this event that is happening and some of the information that the attendees will hear about. Sure. We are going to be having a health fair and we're going to be providing information that would include health screenings. Mm -hmm. We're going to have healthy cooking demonstrations to kind of mix it up and have it be fun. We're going to have our version of TED Talks, which is live chats mm -hmm. with our physicians and other heart and vascular experts that come from uh, Saddleback Memorial. There's going to be free giveaways. We're going to have snacks. What we want to do really is partner with the community mm -hmm. and provide information on the risks of stroke and heart attacks. It's really okay. important. Now, I, I would assume one of the big parts of this is the educational part about what you can do to circumvent that and live a healthier lifestyle. And you might be at a point in your life where uh, the screening could really benefit you. So our screening is gonna take place that day. Yes, we are okay. providing screenings that day. And if you would like an appointment, you can call okay. 800 Memorial and have an appointment for screenings. And, and what, it, what does the, the screening entail? Because people might hear that and they go, am I gonna have to you know, go, go into a room and you know, is it gonna be some kind of a scan or what? So the types of screenings we're yeah. gonna have available is we're gonna be checking for, uh, we're gonna be checking, doing a small poke in your finger, checking your blood okay. and we check for uh, a limited cholesterol level just okay. to see if you're, you know, have high cholesterol. Uh, checking your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. That could be a sign of diabetes. Those two types of screenings. You know, how do people know if they may have a problem? And, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's some health conditions that become very obvious at times. And, of course, checking your, your blood level, your, your uh, cholesterol level, and uh, the, the fat level in your blood and all that certainly helps. But are there other signs that people can look at on their own where they think, you know what, I may be having a problem here. It, it can be complicated at times. Is there, you know, you mentioned a screening. When you folks do maybe a, a complete thorough screening, can someone walk away knowing exactly where they stand in all this? Sure, I think what's important for people to become educated on signs and symptoms. And a lot of times, especially as we start to get a little o older, we say, oh, well, I must be getting a little bit older. You know, um, is if you're definitely, if you're short of breath or if you're having chest pain or if you're not being able to do the things you used to do, mm -hmm. many times we just accommodate, right? Well, right. I'm not gonna walk up that hill, but I'm still okay and I'm yeah. perfectly fine sitting in this chair. <laughs> I think it's yeah. important for people to go through screenings mm -hmm. so that they can identify issues before they lead into serious symptoms. Okay. So the first step, again, is somebody getting their blood work done probably on a yearly basis? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And that's going to at least point in a direction to the physician or uh, to a registered nurse or whoever it might be where let's investigate this further. That's your first kind of inclination, am I right? Exactly. So beyond that, uh, when, when somebody has these screenings, whether it's coming up in a few days or they go ahead and, and do that with their primary care physician, and let's say your cholesterol is a little high or whatever it might be, what is the next step that the medical community can do beyond 
well, you know, eat better, more mm -hmm. exercise? Is there something other, another test that they can do the next step beyond that where it can really pinpoint what might be going on? Well, there's two avenues. So mm -hmm. some of your risk factors are modifiable. So we okay. have control over them okay. and some we don't. We don't have control over how old we are or what race we are, yeah. right? We do have control over our diet, our exercise, and our medication management. Mm -hmm. And I think most primary care, if you come in and your lab work isn't within normal limits, what they will do is they'll say, okay, well, let's look at your diet, your exercise, and what kind of medications you're on. The okay. least invasive they'll start with first. Okay. So at least at that point, unless it's you know, so high a level, there's almost like an emergency point mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. You try to, to get to the point where, let's try and control this, let's have you checked out in another month or whatever it might be, right? Right, and then there's also, depending upon the type of symptoms that you present to your mm -hmm. physician, your physician will, you know, he has the knowledge and the information to provide you with the next course mm -hmm. of treatment. So you may, he may do an EKG okay. for your heart. He may do a, an ultrasound on your carotids. Oh, okay. Right, to look for plaque. He may put you on a treadmill and do a stress test. Because if you um, just, it depends upon what your symptoms is, are and it depends upon your, um, the medications that you're taking. So everyone's gonna be a little bit different. What does a stress test do? So a stress test helps to identify if you are having an issue with your coronary arteries. Okay. So if there's blockage in your coronary arteries. And on the treadmill, you just have somebody go along for five minutes or? So it depends. So and, and, and when, I, when you're talking about stress, you're talking about the stress on your on your heart. No, you're not talking about your mental stress. That's correct. Okay, all right. right. So we like to see what happens with your heart and the mm -hmm. blood flow to the okay. muscle when you're under stress. Okay. And stress may mean running on a treadmill for five or ten minutes. And then if you're not able to run on a treadmill for five or ten minutes and you can't get your heart rate up where we need it to be, they there's medication that they can give you that will simulate that process. Okay. And then what they look at the EKG mm -hmm. when you're under stress and then that identifies if there's blockages in your coronary arteries. Uh, interesting. And then from there, it, that, that's like the next step indication. And yes. If you kind of pass that or things look pretty good, mm -hmm. then uh, you, you obviously you want to maintain good health and good sure. diet and all that. Right. But at least you know you're at that point where in your life that, okay, you're okay at this point, but maybe come back in you annually. Know, a while later. Annually. Yeah. So you should be checking annually. And so if you have a clear bill of health, yeah. let's say, then you know you you want to diet, maintain a healthy diet, exercise, take your medication when you're supposed to, and then come back annually for a visit. As far as that goes, the stress tests would that be after you go? Let's say you go into your primary. Mm -hmm. Let's say and they check your blood work and it seems a little off, a little high, mm -hmm. that's the point where your physicians to say, you know what, I think we should take this to the next step and at least have you do a stress test. Is that usually how it works? Well, there would be more criteria okay. in that just your cholesterol's high. Okay, if you can't just say, I right, want a stress test. That's okay. correct. So if your cholesterol's high, they'll say, well, let's look at your diet and okay. your medication management. Okay. It's when you have symptoms. If you're getting short of breath or you're having chest pain or you're, you know, different people experience coronary artery, excuse me, coronary artery disease yeah. in different matter, um, ways. Okay. And so it would just depend. And so it's your doctor's professional opinion mm -hmm. that he would recommend for you to have a stress test. Okay. Yeah. So this event that's going on May 17th over at Saddleback Memorial, just right across, right across the way there. Right. This would be something that people can get all the kind of information that I'm asking you about right now. Right? Absolutely. You probably get a lot more detail because you're going to have all these different folks there to talk about it, right? Absolutely. As far as the screenings go, do they need to RSVP for that because you have a limited amount? There is a pre-registration process. Okay. All right. So I want to give people first the, the website. By the way, May 17th, 4 to 7 p.m., the website is memorialcare.org forward slash SB 
for Saddleback, Heart Stroke Fair, right? Right. And that's where they can go to get the, the information necessary to find out more about this because it's just a, you know, just a few days from now. Right. And it gives people the opportunity to maybe set up a screening, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, will the schedule be on there as well as far as who's going to be speaking and kind of the times on that? on the uh, website. I should look over to Monica. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Monica's saying yeah. yes, it will be, <laughs> which is uh, good because it gives you an opportunity to kind of see all the information that's going to be there. And it's so close by. It's, it's a free event. Yes. I think it's, it's a good start for people to go and get this information. I think it's fantastic. Even if you've had the information before, it's yeah. always good to go for a refresher. Yeah. You know, there, there's always a benefit to taking a look at the risk factors, mm -hmm. and so, the, and we always have um, new speakers, and so there's information will be good. Yeah, you know, you mentioned quickly um, medications. Mm -hmm. So even though people are to, on certain medications that they may need, it can cause a problem or it's something you want to know about, right? Sure. So that what, I, what I'm getting as people go to these screenings, be prepared to maybe write down your information so you can give this uh, to who, who's ever testing you, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And obviously, you're going to want to know the other information, your, your lifestyle, your diet, and things like that. Right. So again, uh, if you're interested in this, it's on uh, May 17th, which is uh, next week. But you want to go ahead and register for this uh, quickly because things like this uh, fill up. So it's memorialcare.org forward slash SB Heart Stroke Fair. You can get all the information there and set, your up, set, your, set yourself up for a screening. Um, also, their number is very easy to remember, 1-800-MEMORIAL. So there you go. Right. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for I having me. It. Yeah, I think this is wonderful. Great. What you folks are doing. And I know in general, Saddleback, Memorial does these type of things throughout the year, uh, different, they, different subjects that they talk about. So That's correct. Yeah, we'll keep you informed of those. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks. We'll be right back.